everybody who is watching this video. This is uh, Olenjolai Mokotayai, the single who is clicking the buttons and sounding from the beautiful country called the Tanzania. I would like to welcome into our online school that called the Tanzania Online Advanced Secondary School in square bracket to Olenjolai M. We are here to, uh, to, to transform uh, students from the, from the, from the oldest team uh, concepts or all this they believe to the new belief. So we are here transforming mind of the students. Well, so we are going to teach you by using different teaching aids, different teaching uh, techniques, and different teaching methods, so that you will be simplifying life of this stuff which seems like complex. So if you're a parent, well, that is good time, or that is good enough. So you can inform your kids or your children who are under this level to go through uh, our program. So we have this is session six or lecture six. We have our YouTube channels at Kota Online Online and Level Secure Schools. We are hosting more than 500 videos. And then you have to make sure that you subscribe so that you get the official notifications once we add in a new video because we'll be adding videos every day. Okay? And the departments where you are is called Departments of Advanced Physics and the subject is Advanced Physics. And the main topic that we have are uh, in uh, on this stadium of physics, we call it electrostatics. So we are ready to play to play and make with it. And this contents specifically are the form five or class 13. And this material are uh, uh, can be used worldwide. And also this material uh, they can be uh, advantageous okay, to any students. However, that our main focus we are focused on the syllabus of United Republic of Tanzania. So I have already taught five sessions in electrostatic. Uh, this is the sixth session right now when I'm going to teach you that I'll be taking you step to step on, on solving problems uh, regarding to the fundamental law, Coulomb's law, and superposition principle. So you're going to combine all the three laws that you have in this second topic for, for the first topic of general introductions of electrostatic and the second topic that you, which is called the electrostatic force, which is force of repulsions or force of uh, Force of attractions. I left the homework yesterday for every student to make sure that he, uh, to find the difference between. Let me just do the quick review. To link the quick review. Firstly, uh, I made a mistake on labeling. Uh, I labeled the previous sessions as session uh, 04. That's the mistake. So simply in your mind, cut 04, write 05. In the previous sessions, uh, basically, uh, I present uh, I presented the limit, the limitation, the limits of what, the limits of Coulomb's law. Right, Coulomb's law. This is the good law, which deals which deals with what is charges, uh, of two charges, right? And then I presented <coughs> to you about proposition principle. Okay, proposition principle. I stated this proposition principle. I stated it in two ways or in two style. That's a very important principle. And basically, what you say that you say that the vector sum. So you say that if you have one point two charge and it has been surrounded by the several charges, so you say that the resultant force, so resultant force, resultant force, we say that this is the vector sum. Is equal to the vector sum of forty of individual forces, right? And then. And there, uh, we, we, we discussed about resultant force. Let's say that this is a resultant force. We say this is the square root of what? Summations of, uh, of the force in horizontal component square plus some summations of the force of the force in vertical component square. That's a resultant force. I again discuss about direction because the force is the vector quantity. So in case we want to find the direction, we have to find an inverse of the sum of the force in the vertical component over sum of the force of the force in horizontal component. So this is the formula. Then I conclude my session by presenting five similarities, similarities of what in gravitational force and the uh, electrostatic force. So that's the point where we end. So today I want to take you into problem solving. I believe that you are well prepared and you are ready to enjoy the beauty of physics. <coughs> so stay tuned. So let us go to example uh, in the previous 
ein Session 3, Session 3 oder Session, Session 4. We end in example 4. So let's take you into example 5. So now let us go and write. Make sure that you remember to subscribe. <coughs> and in case you have any question, don't hesitate to ask in the comment sections. Okay, we insist the students, we insist you as our students, make sure that you use the comment sections to ask your question. Two equal and similar charges. Two equal and similar. Okay, two equal and similar charges. Two equal and similar charges. Place the at a distance. Place the at a distance. <coughs> Place at a distance of 0 0.09 meter. Okay? Repel each other. Repel each other. <coughs> Repel each other with the force of with the force of 16 newton. The force of 16 newton. If one of the charge, one of the charge, one of the charge. One of the charge, one of the charge is increased, is increased <coughs> by 5.60 microcoulomb. The distance between the charges, the distance between the charge, distance between the charge is changed, is changed by 0 0.03, 0 0.03 meter, so as to have the same force, so as to have Same force of repulsion. Of repulsion. Find the value of each charge. Find the value of each charge. That's the question. Let me read it clearly so that. You will understand sort of being ready. Two equal and similar charges. Place it at a distance of 0 0.09 meter. So this is meter. Okay? Repel each other with a force of 16 newton. If one of the charge is increased by 5.6 microcoulomb, the distance between the, the charge, the charges, the distance between the charges, the distance between the charges, is changed by 0 0.03 meter, so as to have the same force of repulsion. Find the value of each charge. Take some few minutes. I would like to give you a minute, and then do these questions quickly on the piece of paper before you come back, so that you can solve together. Within a one minute, because you are an advanced student. Take a rough paper, and then try to solve it quickly. What does it mean? How can you determine the value of each charge. So do it quickly. Do it. Do it now. So I'm leaving the space for you so that you can do it effectively. So make sure that you do that question to try it. Okay? Should not only depend, should only depend on me. You have to try it yourself. Alright? So I believe that the exercise of trying is going on. You still have 30 seconds. After 30 seconds, I'll be continuing, okay? So make sure that you try it. 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 Try it, try it, try it. You can, you can, you can, you can, try it. Try it, try it, try it, try it, try it now. Try so you see the consequences. When I'll be solving, you understand what are the troubles. Are you about to finish? Are you about to finish? Tell me, please, are you about to finish? Are you 
about to finish. Can you proceed? Are you about to finish? Let me give you some extra 30 seconds. Giving you some extra 30 seconds. Go through it. Go through it. Try it. Try it. You're about to reach the to get the right answer. Try it. Try it. Try it. You still have 10 seconds. Still have 10 seconds. You still have 10 seconds. Still have 10 seconds. Still have 10 seconds. Try it because I want to be a part of, of this program, part of learning. Okay, well enough. So set, uh, 10 seconds are over. I gave you almost three minutes. So now let us solve the problem. Okay? I believe you enjoy it because physics is beautiful and we used to enjoy it. Okay? What's your finding? Have you seen the business how it has been going? And the challenge, when you leave students to, to take some time to try, you know what are they going to do? They will never finish on copying the question until you come back. Right? So I know that you have been still copying the questions when I gave you those three minutes. You didn't end on the copying the questions. But you are still lying yourself. Okay, solution. So we will be given two equal and similar charges. Mean that what the means of these things are similar charges. They have similar... Uh, if they are positive, so if one is positive, the other one is also positive. If the, uh, if the charge one is negative, the other one is negative also. Place that the distance of 0 0.09 meter depend each other with a force of 60 newton. If one of the charge is increased, so this is another vocabulary, is increased by what is 5.60 microcoulomb, okay? The distance between the charge is changed also. So the distance between the charges is also changed, right? by what? 0 0.03 meter, so as to have the same force of 40 of repulsion. <coughs> Find the value of each charge. Wow. <coughs> so we can, uh, we can have data collections uh, that, work, that are given as and Tevin so force, but we can present the data uh, grammatically. So you can also go through that stage, so don't you? you should not cancel it. So the first stage, we say that we, this question has two parts. The first part is the first sentence. Two equal and similar charges placed at a distance of 0 0.09 repel each other with the force of 60 newton, right? So you say that he uh, representing the given information, present the given information in the data, in the data. How do you present this, the way that you present? So we have uh, two equal and similar charges. So this one, it is Q1, and this one, it is Q2, right? So we don't know them, but they are two similar charges. So then the distance between them, this is, there's been distance between the centers of the charges. If you remember, in session five, we spoken about this. So the distance between them, According to the question, is 0 0.09 meter. And the force of repulsion, because this is positive charge, and this is positive charge, so the force of repulsion, okay, this force of repulsion, right? Force of repulsion, and also this one will be pushed away with the force of repulsion. The force of repulsion for this case is equal to 16 Newton. Right? So after presenting our information in that way, so but remember that these are the two and equal similar charges. So Q1 is equal to Q2, which is equal to Q, and Q2 is equal to Q1, which is equal to Q. And we go for a second stage. Okay? This question does not need for the same principle, if you have analyzed it clearly. The second step, what do you say? So second step, we say that you recall, recall the Coulomb. Coulombs are Coulomb are formula, mathematical formula, right? So the Coulomb mathematical formula, we say that the, for, uh, the electrostatic force is equal to our uh, proportionality constant times quantity of charge one, quantity of charge two over R square, right? Or radius square. 
So for this case, we say that the force which is ambiguous is equal to 16 Newton, and the proportionality constant is 9 x 9. I told you how we find it. And then these are like charge, which is Q squared. And then say what R. R it is what is 0 0.09 squared. Right? OK? So this is our first part. This force, the force is 16 Newton. So 16 Newton is equal to 9 exponent 20. Exponent 9. Q square of 40, 0 0.09, 0 0.09 square. So this is our first question. Right? That the first destination I expect my students to reach. Then we come back. If one of the charge, either this, Q1 or Q2, is increased by 5.6 microcoulomb, the distance between the charge is changed by 0 0.03 meter. So we change one of the charge, and then we change the distance between the two charges. What does it mean? So change it by, it means it has been increased by 0 0.03 meter. So suppose that in the first situation, we have two pointy charge, right? We have two pointy charge like this, and the distance between them, at first the magnitude of the charge is this is Q and this is Q, right? They have equal charge and similar charge. Again, the distance between them is 0 0.09. Then what happens? We increase the discharge. So for instance, that, let me just give you the presentation. This now it is a charge that we have increased. In. This is 5, presenting what the 5.6 microcoulomb, right? So this they increase the charge. The distance between them before increasing was this one, 0 0.09. Then we are increasing by 0 0.3 meter. So now it means that the distance between them will be 0 0.09 plus 0 0.0. 3. So total is equal to 0 0.12, right? Meter. That's the distance between them. So then uh, afterwards, so as to have the same force of repulsion, when we increase the one of the charge by 5.6 microcoulomb and also increase the distance between them, we don't change the force of repulsion. The force of repulsion in the first case and second case will be the same, right? Will be the same, it is 16 newton. That's why that is so as to have the same force of 40 repulsion. This is very important keyword. Okay, so this is the first case. So this we call the case one. Okay, case one. So the second case, which is case two, we say that now uh, we present what so we say the same state. So we say we present it. Okay. Okay, the second, let's say, sentence, or second, or representing the second part of the question, of the question, okay, or not, on diagram, on diagram. So then now we have, suppose that this is the charge, which has been increased, and the distance between them, we said it has been increased by, okay? Okay, so this is the case. So this was Q, the distance between them, distance between the centers, right? This is just for the amount of presentation. It is 0 0.09 plus 0 0.03 meter. And then this one is Q plus 5.6 microcoulomb, right? So at the second presentation. And here we have, okay, that's what we say, okay? So then we go for the OT, for the first step, right? The first step. First step, we say that, uh, recall, 
corps de Coulomb, l'eau or comme Coulomb forme. Ok? So then this is a electrostatic force of attraction or repulsion is equal to what? Is equal to proportional to constant Q. So now we have Q times what? Q plus what? 5.60. Uh, change these microcoulombs into coulombs. We do the computations uh, by using the SA unity of the quantity of charge, which is coulomb. We don't do the computations by using microcoulomb. Take note of that. Right? Listen careful. Let me repeat. In the many questions of electrostatic, you'll be given the quantity of charge in terms of uh, microcoulomb. But when we'll be using the coulombs, coulombs mathematical equations, then we have to make sure that we change the quantum of charge which has been given in microcoulombs into the coulomb. We do our computations by using the SA into 40 coulomb. Later, in case you've been looking for the quantum of charge, that's why that our answer always will be in terms of coulombs, and then we convert it into microcoulomb. So take that note. For some other students, we can write that 5.60. Coulomb, micro coulombs. That is wrong because this quantum of charge is not in coulomb. Okay. Then we say that divided by 0 point, so 3 plus 9 is 12. So write 2, we keep 1. 0 plus 0 is 0 plus 1 is 1. So then we say the distance between them is 0 0.12. Right? Meter. This one will be squared. This force of repulsion is said that it be maintained is the same. Then the proportionality constant is 9 exponent 30, exponent 9. And then stem sort the quantity of charge Q. Then we have Q plus 45.60 is for a negative 60 log. Then this one we divide it in with 0 0.12 square. And this will make your the second question. Make the second equation. Question. Okay. So after make the second equation, what do we say? We say fine. So you go for the equation for the first system. What can you notice if you observe the first equation and second equation? So this is the second equation. Stop writing. Is the second equation? Is this? Uh, this the first equation? This is the second equation. What can you notice? The magnitude of the force in the first case is equal to the magnitude of the force in the second case. So simply say that in the first step now we are going is we have to take equation one, we equate to equation two. That's all. Okay? So let me clean here. Because I want to remain with the question. Huh. Uh -huh. hey, 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 hey. Okay. So to equate these two equations, what do you say? We say that the uh, uh, nine, absolute nine, then a point of charge, point of charge plus forty-five point six, that's for negative six. Okay, and then we say that uh, we have of what? Of a zero point one two. Okay, this is equal to what? This is equal to 9, x minus 9, q square of what? Over 0 0.09 square. Well, <laughs> so this one and this one will cancel. This one point of charge and this one point of charge will cancel. Right? Again, we say that the left hand side remains is q, uh, q plus 5.6 from negative 6. And then we say divided by 0 0.12 square. This will be equal to it. So here also remains is Q over 0 0.09 square. Okay, well. So what will be next? Quote. So you can cross multiplication and deal with it. So in cross multiplication, cross multiplication, we are going to have 0 0.09 square Q then plus 5.6 exponent negative 6 times 0 
9 square. This is equal to what? This is equal to 0 0.12 square cube. So we have this part and we have this part. Okay? So what will be next? So he said that let us take this cube on this side. So left hand side remains is 5.6, so negative 6 times 0 0.09 square. And this is equal to what? This is equal to 0 0.12 uh, square q minus 0 0.09 square Cube. Right? You understand you are just copying. So 5.6, so negative 6, times what? 0 0.09 square. This is equal to what? So how far? 0 0.03 square cube. So you have to divide by 0 0.03 square, and this one you have to divide by 0 0.03 square. So then we get the magnitude of Q. You have to use your scientific calculator. So this one and this one cancel. So then there is just a matter of computation. It's a very simple part. The simplest part for advanced students. Take your scientific calculator. As I see, I'm not taking the scientific calculator. You, it's a time for calculation now. Okay? So, we have 0 0.09 square. And then say we divide with short 0 0.03 square. 9. So, let's make 9. 9 times 5.6. So, negative 6. So the answer is 5.04, is it? 0 0.09 over 0 0.03, then we square. We multiply by 5.6, so negative 6. It's 5.04, so negative that one, say. anyway. So then, Let's say that we want to take 0 0.12 or 0 0.09 plus 0 0.03. 0 0.09 plus 0 0.03. 0 .03. So then we want to square this. And then we subtract to set 0 0.03. So it is 0 0.09 square. Zero point one two square minus zero point zero nine square. So this the print where I made a mistake. Should take this quantity minus this quantity won't get this. Take 0 0.0, 0 0.12 square minus 0 0.09 square, the answer is 60.3. That's from negative 3. So you divide by 60.3, so negative 3. So 60.3. 60.3 and negative 3. So then now we take 0 0.09 square. We divide by the response. Then we multiply by 5.6. This one negative 6. Yes, yeah. 
So now the quantity of charge will be 5722 exponent negative 6 coulomb. Hmm. Have to be careful. You have to be careful. You have to be very careful. You have to be very careful. You have to be very careful, my dear student. You can do a mistake like the one that I did. That is the right answer. Okay. So we do remember that, or oh, I, I, I taught you in the previous lectures, one coulomb is equal to one exponent six micro coulomb. Right? So then there we have 7.6 power negative what? Power negative 6 coulomb. 7.2 exponent negative 6 coulomb. This is equal to how many charge? To how many micro coulomb? So if you convey it, you find that the quantity of charge is equal to what? 7.2 micro coulomb. Right? So the question asks can I find the value of each charge? Therefore, the value of each charge is 7.2 micron coulomb. Beautiful. That is an interesting question. If you have any question, don't just stay it. Ask in the comment section. That's all about example five. You can write a concept because you saw that the concept we introduced it. We have never introduced it in the previous examples. That's all about example five. I want to take you on to example six. So now we want to combine the two laws, fundamental Coulomb's law and Swarovski equation. We should state that given that, given the three, Print charge which I in vacuum as shown below. the result anti-force on Q3 We have Q1 is equal to 6 microcoulomb. 
Thank you, three. Gonna get you two micro coulomb. Thank you, two. Is equal to four micro coulomb. This is four centimeter. This is six centimeter. Okay, so you've been given a problem there on the blackboard. Given the three point charges, uh, which are in vacuum, as shown below on the diagram, and then find the resultant force on Q3. This is Q1, 6 microcoulomb, positive. The distance between Q1 and Q3 is 4 centimeters. Okay, then this is Q4, which is 4 microcoulombs. The distance between Q3 and Q4 it is 6 cm. And the distance between Q1 and Q4 it is, what? It is 10 cm. Then now find the resultant force uh, on the Q3. How can I find it? Huh? I talked about the resultant force. So you have vertical components and horizontal components of the force. Huh? So what matters there? All the forces are horizontal forces. Can you try it? Can you take a piece of paper and try it for a minute? Pause the video and then try it for a minute. For the video and try it for a minute. Okay, so I think that you have got enough time to go through this uh, example. And even my fattest students here have been struggling on left and right, but they didn't, unfortunately, that they missed the question. Okay? But that is good to try yourself rather than copying the solution from the teacher. I want to challenge you, and I say that we teach you to think differently. Take this at the a real world problem such as waiting for you to solve in order to get t shillings, Tanzanian shillings, in order to get money. So, what will you do? Will you leave it? No, you will solve it. So, think about that. Okay, so you'll be given three point charge, which have been uh, placed in a vacuum at the medium, okay? And then we say that, uh, okay, so we want to calculate the certain force on Q3. We have to follow steps on solving this problem. The first step, for you, you may start with that I'm even, but for me, I'm going straight forward because everything is there. The first step for that case, we say that let us compute. First of all, the first step, we say that we call Coulomb, Coulomb's uh, law or Coulomb formula. You remember the Coulomb formula? Yes. Force of attraction, so passion. Is equal to K, Q1, then Q2 of what? Of R squared. 
Right? Great. So you have experience of Q1 is equal to Q2. Today, Q1 is not equal to Q2. Right? So by using that Coulomb's law now, I can take you on to the second step. We say that, let us compute what? Let us the compute the force of attraction uh, acting on Q3 due to Q1. That's how we write it. Force acting, the force of attraction acting upon Q3 due to what is Q1. This is positive and negative. Unlike charge, attracted to each other. But fundamental law for electrostatic. So then we have negative. So you have to be careful because you have never dealt with positive and negative charge. And sometimes many students are used to confuse because they involve this negative sign in computation. So we don't have negative force. So this is just for the matter of the sign to know the nature of 40 of the force and the force of attraction. So you say that the force uh, acting on, on Q3 due to Q1, this will be equal to, because it is free space, so we have to a constant. Then we are going to have Q1 times Q3 over the distance between them, which is R squared, right? And then again, we have to know the directions later. So there, this one is Q3, Q1 is equal to is equal to K. K is what? 9, exponential 9, and then we have Q1. What is Q1? Q1, Q1 is 6 microcoulomb. So 6 exponent negative 6. I told you that we used to do our computations and use the Coulomb's uh, mathematical formula when the point of charges are in what in Coulomb. Afterwards, in case that the questions ask you to determine the value of the quantity of charge, then we change the Coulombs into microcoulombs because one Coulombs does not exist, right? But microcoulombs are what exist, and even in the main uh, capacitors, whether electrolytic capacitor or super capacitors or ceramic capacitors or paper capacitors, they use we used to, to define them in terms of 40 microcoulomb. Okay, so 6 is for negative 6, and then that's Q1, Q3, it is 2. Here we don't involve this negative in computation. So you say that multiply by 2, next for the 30, negative 6, and this will be Coulomb square of R. What the distance between them? It is what? 4 centimeter. Change the 4 centimeter into meter. Then you square. So you get force acting on Q3 due to Q1, you get magnitude. So use your scientific calculator professionally to find the response there. So let me try to help for those who are uh, who are not aware of using this scientific calculator. The best way in which I advise find the denominator first, you have four x for negative two, and then we square, right? So you get the square the square of the denominator and then we take 9 x 29 we divide by the response and then we get the response then multiply by what is 60 exponent and uh, negative 60 times 2 exponent negative 6 so the response is what 67.25 so the response 67.5 let me check yes 67.5 newton 67 and 5, 67. So this is 67, 20, 5 Newton because it is a force. Again, this is the magnitude of the force. Say magnitude of the force. Say magnitude of the force. Okay. 67, 20, 5. Professionally, we should have the magnitude sign, but we just say that we ignore it. But again, that is magnitude of the force. Because we want to use this for position principle, we should be also interested in or on direction of the force. So where okay, so what is going to happen when we have Q1 and Q2 in space? So Q1 is going to attract Q2. Right? And Q3, no, Q1 is going to attract Q3. This is it. And Q3 is going to attract Q1. Right? So what is going to be, uh, what does Q3 experience? Q3 to experience that is, will be attracted away, right? So it means that in this one, you say that it towards, this force is towards certain, towards Q1. 
What does it mean? This displays, for example, you have Q1, you have Q3. So this is what is Q1. Then the distance between the centers. So the ratios of the force for this case is this one. That's what this towards what it towards Q1. Right? Direction very important in the top computing the resultant force. That is the second step. And this is the second step of the direction, very important step. So identify what is direction. Let me go for the first system. The first system, we say that we let like compute or to find that computed. So let compute. force acting on Q3 due to Q2. Due to Q2. So you say that according to the Coulomb, This is equal to what? Should not the constant, which is 9. 9 times what? Okay. 9 is only 9. 9 is only 9 times what? Times Q what? Times Q3. Q3 is what? Two and negative six. Q four and then say what? Q two. Q two is what? Four is one eight. Negative six divided by what? Divided by the distance between them, which is what? Six from negative two squared. So use your scientific calculator to compute force acting on Q3 due to the Q2. This is equal to it. So if you do your computation, hopefully you're going to get 20 Newton. 20 Newton. 20 Newton. Okay, 20 Newton because if you square this, you find that you have 60, then you have 8, yeah, something like that. So 20 Newton. Right? Can we prove? Okay, we can prove because I did my computation and I believe that I was right. So negative 6 and negative 2. This is the denominator. Then we find square of it. We have 9 x squared 9. We get the response. Then multiply by 2. Exponent negative 6. Multiply by 4. So negative 6. So it's 20 Newton. Then that is the magnitude of the force. In order to deal with the resultant, also it's better we know the direction of that force. Right? Directions of what force of this force? So we have this Q1, Q3, and Q2. Negative point of charge, positive point of charge. And like charge attracting each other. Like charge repel to each other. So you have a like charge here, which is positive and negative. So what is going to happen to this Q3? Q3, it will be attracted, right? It will be attracted toward the, other, toward the Q2, right? And Q3 also is going to attract toward the Q2. So simply, it will be attracted, so you say that these 20 newtons will be towards sorting, towards, towards sorting, towards Q2. Are we together? Towards sorting, towards Q2. Okay, so if that's the case, we say that we go for the fifth state. The fifth state, we say that it represents, 
Okay? But then the forces means f of q3 due to q1 and what is force of 40 q3 due to q2 on what is on the figure below. So this is q3. Listen careful. This is q3. Right? The experience is two forces. One force in, in this direction. This is force due to OT, FQ3 due to Q1, right? And against the other ones is FQ3, FQ3, Q2, right? So what are the directions of these forces? Are they moving in the same direction or opposite direction? Huh? Opposite direction. So according to the, uh, according to what you have learned, Concerning about church, concerning about uh, you learned about uh, scaling the vector quantities during your form three education is possible, if I'm not mistaken. So you say that if two forces are moving in the same directions, we used to add them, right? And if uh, two forces are moving in opposite directions, we used to subtract them, right? So we say that uh, the sixth state now, say that compute, okay, resultant, resultant force in horizontal component. Why do you call it horizontal components? Because all of those two forces acting horizontally along the straight line, right? So simply this one, we are going to say that this is the summation of the force in horizontal component. Listen careful. Horizontal components mean that they are parallel to the surface, those forces. If for example at one point each other, for example, that if you find this Q4 is somewhere else there. So you are going to have an angle. Right? So you have so because you have an angle, here you have both vertical and horizontal components. Right? How you get that? Here, yeah. are we together? So this is the force, which is 20 FQ3 to Q2, and then the other one, we found that it is what, 67.5 Newton. Between 67.5 Newtons and 20 Newton, which is the largest, which is the large? 65.30, 67.5 Newton. So it means that the, this, point, this Q3 will be attracted more towards Q1. Because here we have uh, the force of attraction, which is 67.5, and here we have the, the force of attraction, which is 20, 20 Newton, right? Are we together? So this resultant force will be the force along Q3 or on the Q3 due to Q1, due to Q1, minus what? Force acting on Q3 due to Q2. All right? Are you together? Okay. <coughs> so then we say that this is a summation of horizontal component. So this one is 67.5 Newton minus 20 Newton. Pardon? directions you subtract. Opposite direction we subtract. We subtract. Yeah. Subtract. That's all. Same directions you add. Same directions mean that they are supporting each other. Opposite direction means this is going this side, this side. So one is going to win. When you say that we are adding forces, for example, that myself, it's just simple, right? I'm moving with 67.5 newtons. And when I reach here, somebody is going to push me forward with 20 newtons. What happens? So I'll be moving with 20 newton plus 67.5 newton. But what if I'm moving, right? Okay, can you come? But you are, you are addressing. You mind that I'm moving with 65.5 20? 67.5 newton, right? 
and then see if somebody is pushing me back with 20 newton. What happens? If I will keep on moving, I won't move with the same speed. <laughs> this is pure mechanics. You have, to, you have to understand what's going on. Because this charge is attracted on this side and on this side. So one is going to attract him more. And that will be the relation of 40 of the charge. You have to understand. So let's use to cram. So the summations of horizontal components here. These signs of summations should not just confuse you. Okay, so it will be at 47.5 Newton toward OT toward EQ OT Q1. Right? And then we say that that is fine, that is fine, that is fine. We go for the seventh step. Seventh step, we say that we have to recall what the, uh, the formula formula of 40 of resultant force. Result, resultant force. Force due to due to superposition principle. Due to superposition principle. Proposition what in principle. Right? So resultant force, how does it state? So you say that the resultant force, I told you that is a square root of what? Summation of horizontal components of the force square. And that's what summation of horizontal components of force in y components square. Right? We have horizontal components. According to this presentation of the charges, we don't have any vertical component. Stop writing. According to this presentation of the nature of these problems, we have only horizontal components of the forces. No any force that is maybe is perpendicular or maybe in a, in a vertical. So if that's the case that we say uh, summations of the force in vertical components will be zero. Right? Then we say that resultant force, in this case, should be square root of what? Summation of force in horizontal direction square plus zero, which is equal to the sum of the force in horizontal component. Right? Which is equal to what? 47.25. So the question is you calculate the resultant force. So therefore, resultant force, okay, resultant force is what? 47.5 Newton. At the end of solving, you can say it's the ratios. Two are not. Toward the right or toward the other, toward Q2. Toward Q2, toward Q3, toward Q1. Toward Q1. Right? If you have any question, don't state yourself to ask in the comment section. So let me give you the home. Doesn't mean that I'm going to end the session, no. Let me write the homework at the end, because I know if you're right in the middle, you'll forget that oh sir, excuse me that you know that I didn't take your look of it. Did you leave the homework first? So you go for example seven. So also this is the concept. Calculate the resultant force. There's a resultant force on the 10 microcoulomb. 10 microcoulomb charge. In, in the figure below.
So this is 6 microcoulomb, and this is 10 microcoulomb, and this is 8 microcoulomb, and this is 0, 0 0.3. This is 0 0.2, 0 0.2 meter. <laughs> nice question, is it? Very nice question. Like a triangle, right angle triangle. So you enjoy it. Okay. Pause the video and then do the computation. Calculate the exertion force upon along with 10 micro long. It's a very simple question for my students. You have to thank God in case that you'll find it is a question of this is time in the exam, but as long as you know it. If you don't know it, and uh, it will be a disaster for you. You can run even out of the exam. Solution. Physics is not a political science subject, so you have to be careful. Okay? So calculate the exact force on the 10 microcoulomb. 10 microcoulomb. 10 microcoulomb. 10 microcoulomb. Charge in the figure below. You have six microfarad. So if the sign of the charge is not written, it means that these are the positive charge. So this is the positive charge, this is the positive charge, this is the positive charge. If the sign of the charge is not written. So for negative charges, we say that the sign should be written. Wow. So are you ready to enjoy the beauty of this? Pause the video. Let me give you a few minutes to cut it on the piece of paper, and then we'll go along. You can try it quickly. You can try it. You can try. You can try. You can try. Even myself, when I made for the first time, I tried on the piece of paper before I wrote on the, uh, on the, on the, on the exercise book that to come and teach you. So if you know, so you can try. Believe yourself. Believe yourself you can try, and not only try, but you can get the right answer. Because you know physics. Solution. The first is to you can spend much time on writing the data given, but for myself, I'm going straight forward. We need to calculate the delta force on the 10 micro long chart in the figure below. So 10 micro long, this is positive, guys. So the quantity, the quantity of charge uh, of 10 micro long is well disturbed or affected by the two charges, which is 8 microcoulombs and 6 microcoulombs. So you have to compute, we can first of all, uh, just I can call it in, suppose that this is Q1, this is just my own name, Q2, Q3, and I have to show it. So the first state, we say that recall the coulomb, Long. I used to take these questions from the uh, reference books for advanced physics in Form 5. Recall the Coulombs. Mathematical equation. Because I have a partial solid partial is equal to proportionality constant k. Q1 times Q2. R square. So second state. So let us compute force acting Q2 into Q1. This is our Q2. This is Q1. Right? So 
So you say that a conjugate pronoun, so it's a magical question. So it's this one, we have proportionality constant, k, which is 9, x to 9. We have again k1. k1 is 60. Right? k1 is 6, x to negative 6, times 2, 2. It is 10 micro, micro coulomb. Six and divide by the distance between them. It's zero point three meter. Okay. Fine. First acting on Q two we did take Q one. I thinking about is how we can simplify this is what's simple because this one this one become x negative what negative 12 then this one so you can use your scientific calculator to compute that force so we have 0 0.3 square So you have 0 0.3 square, nine exponent nine. If nine exponent nine times six Six exponent negative six. Our balance is ten, eh? excuse me. So divide by six exponent negative six. So we multiply by ten to negative six. Yes, the answer is sixty newton. Right? 6 Newton. So after finding this force of, uh, of repulsion between 6 microcoulombs and 10 microcoulombs, which have been spaced by 0 0.3 meter, then you have to make sure that you, uh, we know the direction. So these are uh, this like charge or like charge? Like charge. Like charge. So what is going to happen there? Repulsion. Right? So if it repulsions, then we say that. What will be done onto the Q2 with the Q1? To be pushed, right? So we pushed in which side? Of this direction. And this is 10, this is 6. Positive or positive? So it's a repulsion force. Even this one, yes. Provided repulsion force might be smaller than compared to this. But it's there. Okay, so this one is said that the two are the towards sorting towards Q2. I said so towards 10 or Coulomb. Right? Okay, to extend the coulomb. 
Then that is the second state. You go for the third state. So the state we say that compute the force of or the cross-static force f of q2 due to what q3. Right. Is equal to k, which is 9 is 9. So q2, which is what? 10 is 10. q3 is what? 8 is 10. Eight is when you get forty six. Then we say what is R? Zero point two. Zero point two square. Use your scientific calculator to compute. Okay, so uh, we say two words, sort of, but it's horizontal component. So we say that in this horizontal component. And then, so when you compute, what do you get? You get, if you do it properly, compute it is 18 Newton. So the force acting on Q2, using a scientific calculator, is equal to 18 Newton. Two words, sort Towards so what? This will be pushed away. So it's still towards so what? Towards Q2. Or upwards. Towards so what? Towards Q2. Or upwards. So, if this is the case, but the thing is, listen, how many horizontal components of force do we have? Only one. How many vertical components of force do we have? Only one. So then we go straight forward to find the resultant force. So it's mean that the relations of the force, you find that this is Q2. So there's a force pushing it in this direction. And also there's a force pushing it up in this direction. So this is what we call T F of Q2 due to Q1. And this is F of Q2 due to Q3. So in the case, we need to find a certain force. A certain force which is going to act here. Right? So it's going to act there at the process that you have to go through it. So you say that the, the FFQ2 due to Q1, this is equal to the summations of horizontal components, which is equal to 630 Newton. Then you have the force uh, along the Q2, Q2, Q3 is equal to the summation of force in vertical component, 18 meter. Right? So in the case, we said that fine. 
This is the first step. This is the first step. Okay, so if that's the case, you go for the first step. So you call it. Because of the same principle. Because of the same principle. So I see the state that you know that shows that the that and force is equal to the square root. Okay, so you said that this is horizontal component square. That's what summations of vertical component square. So for this case, we have both. So we say that in the resultant force, we look at the square root of what? Square root of horizontal components is what? 6 newton square. Unity newton square. Right? So what do you say? You say that the and force is equal to what guys? Use the scientific calculator. So it is 6 and that is 64. So the 6 plus 64 is equal to 100. Right? At 100, so. Ah, no. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me, I saw this is 8. So this is the 6 Newton square. Then 18, half of it is 3, 24 Newton square, if I'm not mistaken. If you add them, so you get what? 350. It's 360. So the resultant force, for this case, is equal to 360. 360 Newton square. So use your scientific calculator. And finally, if you use it, effectively your scientific calculator, the fight is 18.97 Newton. 18.97 Newton. Trust. So we say that therefore, that and force, that and force, and force is 18.97 Newton. Right? Okay. That is good. But again, can you find the angle? Yes, try to. Let us find the angle. The angle. Which is the direction? Is equal to tan inverse of what? Summation of vertical component or summation of okay. I told you. So simply say that theta is equal to tan inverse sum of vertical components, which is y is what 18. Newton. And some of the horizontal components, which is what? Which involves also pi, which is what? 636 Newton. So this is equal to time inverse of the rate. An inverse of 3 is equal to what? 71.57. Seventy one point five seven degree. Mm 
a demo. So you say that direction of resultant force is 71.57. Right? I believe you enjoyed physics. You are still enjoying it. Be careful, Auntie. Right? You shift it from this place to this place. Don't keep on copying. Let me insist you, please, this is the end of the solution for our problem. This was a continuation. So I shifted from this column to this column. Right? Because students, they used to copy. They copy Ventos stuff without thinking that they have already the X as I move. But unfortunately, that they have in the X as I move, they don't have in their mind. So then we say that uh, this is the end of solving the problems that will be given. It's one of the interesting questions. So I'd like now to leave the homework for you so that you can go through it before you meet for the next session. Because it's better if I give you this material uh, in chunks, it means that in package. So this is the first package. So when I'll be keep on delivering more packages for you, you might find that you get lost along the way. So, so again, the next session, which is session 07, I'll be teaching also about problem solving. But now we'll be dealing with triangles, diagrams, rectangles, how we can deal with them. Okay, charging triangle, formulating triangle, charging formulating rectangle, charging something you can formulate here, a figure like a square. So how will you deal with those cases? Right, there are the techniques. But we are still using what in fundamental law, electrostatic, Coulomb's law, and so on. So this now will make example eight. Is it eight? Yeah, example eight. Oh, we got my students here. They don't say yes or no. Be careful in this question. Concept. Find the result. So the question is not too long. Find the resultant force. Find the resultant force at x. Find the resultant force at x. We have four quantities of charge. One, two, three, four. This is Q1 is equal to six microcoulomb. This is Q2. So you got negative two microcoulomb. Microcoulomb. Then this is X. And then this is Q3, which is three microcoulomb. Distance of separation between this center. This is two centimeter. This is six centimeter. This is four centimeter. Four centimeter.
Okay. So I have presented. I'm trying to go. If I've left a piece of information, two centimeter there, six centimeter there, four centimeter there. Q1 is six micrograms is there. Q2 is negative two micrograms is there. Actually, X is there. Q3 is three microgram. Then the question is: Find the resultant force at X. Find the resultant force at T, X. So it's a conception. So go and deal with it. It's a homework. Hey, I didn't write that it's a homework yet. Oh, wow. So we have to run from this question. Say that if uh, Sir, you give us a homework in session what? In session six. So this is homework. 06 and also in terms of example this is the example 6 example 8 and the question asks you that to find find the resultant force or not on x find the resultant force or not or at x at x. So find the resultant force at this x. Okay, so make sure that you try that question. It's simple uh, if you have gone through. But you have, I insist you, you have to review everything that you have begun or you have talked to you uh, from example 5, 6, 7, and 8. And so those three examples is 5, 6, and 7. Make sure that you revise them clearly. And then so come and try these questions. Don't worry to try. Don't worry to try. Because sometimes we build the concepts on top of another concept through questions. Okay? So make sure that you try and you do it before our next meeting. Our next session. This session seven. Which actually that you'll be taking you the be uh, will be session seven. Hopefully session seven and session session eight, if I'm not mistaken, so uh, the media problem solving. So you have three sessions for problem solving on electrostatic force of repulsions or what attractions to because it's very important. I thank God who have prepared me during the preparation of this session. And I'd like also to thank him who have given me strength to present and to teach you uh, in the simplest way. Remember that always I used to say this phrase before my students that Olegelai does not know everything concerned about electrostatic, but I just know the small portions of it. That's why, it, but I'm ready to teach as a student or as a lover of what I know. So that is my greatest responsibility that I have in the planet age. So this is the end of the session six, or lecture six of problem solving in fundamental laws, laws and solution principle. I encourage you that now you can take some questions of the answer about electrostatic force and you can solve them. So make sure to do it. If I gave you almost eight examples, I would like it to be I would be, I would like to be happy in case that after a short time we'll find you that you have a library of of electrostatic possibly uh, at, uh, in this course that we've got possibly have set examples. So you have addition of more than what twenty-two questions of mine. Right? So make sure to sub subscribe, you share this content with your colleagues. And you have to join me in the next session, session seven, when I'll be teaching you now about today uh, the applications for question principle on dealing with charges which have been arranged in the uh, exactly figure, right? So that's what we are going to teach you. So keep on praying for me, and keep on praying for you. I know that advanced life is a little bit challenging, but believe me, believe me that you're gonna make it, even if that you didn't think that you're going to make it. So stay tuned, love the beauty of physics, and then start, let us meet in the next session. May God bless you. See you then.